Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Global Goddess Fest, where men and women are tuning in from around the world to celebrate uh, connection, education, connecting with global leaders, and gain inspiration on creating the life of your dreams. So today we have dear sister, beautiful friend of mine, Laura Swan, and she's here. And she's going to be sharing a little bit about reclaiming your power through wholeness. So to give you a little introduction, Laura Swan is an experienced registered yoga teacher, certified holistic health life coach, and is a devoted wife and mother. Um, she works on women's life and leadership coaching and is passionate about advocating for women's healing and empowerment. So she supports women and, men and girls all around the world uh, through her coaching and online services and courses, along with teaching, speech, uh, speaking and leading retreats internationally. So she's currently here living in Encinitas, California with her beautiful husband and two children, one of which we have as a guest as well. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here and taking time out of your busy day as a mother and coach and show up. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, oh, hello. We have a little friend here in the pouch, so we're gonna just kind of uh, see how he does, and you know, get him, get him. Hold on, just like if I can get him on nursing, then we'll be really set. There we go. There we go. This is called multitasking at its finest. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored to be here. Um, grateful to be a part of what you're creating. I think it's actually perfect that I have a baby in this session because you know, as women, when we're trying to create things in the world sometimes we think we have to choose between motherhood and our endeavors and our dharma and they really are so intertwined and and interconnected so i'm more and more allowing my children to be a part of mine versus separate from it and that's really the only way i've been able to stay sane <laughs> so it's an honor to be here oh i love that and so um as we're talking about reclaiming your power through wholeness. Maybe you want to just share a little bit about what that means to you. Sure. Well, um, you know, I've, I've been leading women's circles and, and um, experiences for many, many years. And one of the, one of the types of um, experiences that I really enjoyed and was drawn to and I found a lot of results from where women really seem to reclaim their power was through working with archetypes. And, um, you know, it's a way of looking at different parts of ourselves that make up all of who we are and not allowing any part of ourselves to be left behind. And so, you know, I found that through working with archetypes, there is really an awesome way to look at our inner lover and that's a way of just looking at our sensuality and our sexuality and is it repressed is it expressed is it really how we want it to be in the world is it who we is it authentic to who we are and then you know the mother archetype and connecting to all the pardon my language but shit that can come up around mother <laughs> around our own mothers around mothering around whether or not we want to be mothers around you know the incredible guilt and shame that comes with feeling like we're not good enough mothers there's so much around that energy and so I found that by working with these different archetypes or universal energies that we all as women have inside of us it was a way of helping women myself included to reclaim our power reclaim the fullness of who we are not just a fraction and when I talk about wholeness for me you know my journey of wholeness has been around how do I express these different parts of myself and really feel authentically me without having to um, put any part of myself aside now saying that you know I, I wrote I wrote a book called reclaim your power it's right here <laughs> And I finished it while I was pregnant with this little guy. And I was, you know, saying in this book about how you can really be all of who you are and you don't have to put any part of yourself behind. And, and then here I am three months postpartum finding that, okay, maybe you don't have to put yourself behind, but you certainly have to put things on hold sometimes in order for other parts to be nurtured. And right now, I mean, I'm so deep into new baby and mamahood and, and trying to be the best mother I can without losing my mind and not having a lot of sleep. And my career and a lot of my work has been just 
put to the side for a little bit. Like this interview is something that is actually one of the first things I've done, um, you know, since having my baby, but it's a part of my wholeness, right? It's a part of who I am. It's a part of who I am to share and to teach and to be with women and to help women heal and to help women find who they truly are inside and to rise into the fullness of our power because I feel that calling like I know you do and like so many women at this time on the planet feel that we have to do something. And so even if it's going to be messy and even if it's going to look a little strange and if I'm going to have a baby, you know, in my interviews, it's going to, it's going to be a part of my wholeness to still do this work. So that's kind of like, you know, both a history of where it's come from and, um, and it's also where I am right now with trying to integrate these teachings into my life, like real time right now. Definitely. And yeah, what a beautiful example of the mother archetype, you know, this multitasker. <laughs> I'm swaying in the mother right now. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know, there's many things that I wanted to give birth to. My son being the most, the biggest, you know, and, and my book was birth literally just days before he was born and it, it, I was tapped into this creative power inside of me that I felt like I could create many things at once and now on the other side of that after the birth after the labor now it was like a natural time to be resting and replenishing to recuperate from such a like crazy creative time that I had during my pregnancy it was really insane but it was beautiful and it's now in a lull to allow for other parts to be expressed right now such as mother totally and I hear you know a real honoring of the cycles through that process of mm -hmm. like oh I have this creative power and I'm literally creating a baby inside of me and what else can I create while I'm in the zone and doing mm -hmm your book and really like using the cycles and that knowledge to propel you forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's available for us and like in our, in our cycles of pregnancy and, um, and labor and birth, like there's magic and there's magic happening and we can ride those, those cycles that actually help to propel other parts of ourselves forward. If we, if we can understand that they're not divided, right? Like I don't have to separate being pregnant from writing my book or, you know, like they, they really fuel each other. And as women, we have that incredible cycle of life moving inside of us that just like the moon has times of fullness and has times of darkness. And it's, it's an opportunity to ride those waves and to ride those cycles. And that's a part I think of our wholeness is not to expect it to be um, in more of the, I think the masculine model of being to be fully expressed and creative and on top of things all the time and to be growing and expanding all the time, but that there really is this natural cycle of outward and inward every day, every month, and in every part of our lives as women. And that's really where we can create our most authentic work in the world if we learn to ride those waves and those cycles. Totally. Mm, yeah, it's so, so helpful. What do you feel like has been maybe one of these, one of the challenges or blockages that you faced through, you know, going on this journey? Well, there's been a lot. <laughs> I think it's mostly been like, mm, just everyday fumbling through how to balance it all. You know, and, um, you know, I talk about in my book that one of my one of my major life healings was around my own mother and around my experience of growing up without having her really in my life. And it created this void of starvation, really, for the feminine in my life that eventually became, you know, my greatest gift to help propel my work of working with women and the feminine and sisterhood but it was my deepest wounding and so there's a there's a part of me that always has this like um, double-edged sword of wanting to be the best mother possible <laughs> because of what I experienced and I'm always finding that there's there's this facing of, of guilt or um, you know like 
if I'm not 100% in motherhood, then maybe I'm not really being a good mother. And finding that balance every day of how I do my work and see clients and do the things I love and still be so fully available and present for my children because that, that, that is the most important thing to me right now, more than anything else. And so it's every day. And then I have this husband too, right, that I have to <laughs> also remember that we have to nurture our relationship and our connection. And and friends and so many things in my life that matter. And the greatest challenge really comes from like sitting in the discomfort of not knowing how to do it all. Mm. Not how, not knowing how to do it right because there is no right, especially for what we as women are trying to do today in this day and age. Like it's, it's different than ever before. And, um, and I feel pressures of, of wanting to do it faster and wanting to do it, you know, wanting to make it look a certain way and, and, the greatest challenge is just to sit with it and, and be and trust. And I think that, um, you know, there's a part of me and I, and a part of me that was afraid to just, to just be a mother. This part of me, that was afraid that that wasn't important enough because of my own experience of my, my mother's unhappiness, you know, that when she was just a mother, she was so unhappy. And so there's just like such an opportunity for my own personal healing in, in what I do. Like that is, I'm always trying to make the connections of what's being asked to be healed inside of me as I do my work with other women. Cause I think it's the greatest guideposts for how I can help others. Definitely. Definitely. And just being able to fully embody it and, feel into all of the light and dark that is there. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to dive into some wise woman. So how has wise woman showed up in your life and helped guide you forward? Sure. Oh, well, she's been my greatest guide. She's one of the archetypes that I talk about and reclaim your power. And um, in, in a lot of the different uh, retreats and workshops I teach, I kind of always come back to that energy because she is, she's the intuition inside of all of us and the inner guidance system that in our world, we are very much guided to look outward for answers. We're guided to look to, um, even in, even in the greatest of intentions in our healing and in our spiritual like seeking, we're still very much looking outward for answers. And it's, it's kind of like a way that we're taught culturally to find what's right for us. And wise woman is inside. She is the inner guidance and she is the inner wisdom that no matter who you are, and even if you're a man, you've got wise woman inside, you've got wise man inside, um, that we have this part of ourselves that knows. She knows what we need and who is the right match for us as far as friendships and relationships. And she knows whether or not we should um, take this job or this job or leave this job or leave this relationship. She is there, but we get so caught up in looking to the outside for answers and get trained to do that from day one, unless you're very blessed to have been raised by a wise woman yourself, you know, or a wise grandmother. Like some of us have that wise grandmother who reminded us to look inside. I think the greatest example of this archetype in modern times is in Moana. <laughs> <laughs> the grandmother in Moana. Have you seen that movie? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's the one that's always reminding Moana to look inside and to listen. And she accepts when Moana feels like she can't do it, but she reminds her of who she truly is. And so that's, that's that energy that we all have inside of us. And so I've, I, I very much love to help other women connect to her because that's what's guided me throughout my whole life to everything that's ever mattered has come from listening. And it's not always convenient. That's for sure. She doesn't always guide us in the most convenient directions. It's usually, it's usually the most challenging, you know, because it's what forces us to be who we truly want to be and shed away the, um, the untruth and that can be really hard sometimes so we don't always like what she has to say and I think that's a big reason why um, sometimes it's not as fun to get in touch with her mm -hmm. cool. she's like you know I'm gonna tell like it is <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> So, um, you know, I've had some exercises and a little brief meditation. You can do that here if you'd like. Um, a little visualization that can help 
all of our goddesses to get in touch with her. And I really, in, in my life mission, hope that as many women as possible can hear something like this or, 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 you know, for maybe a lot of your listeners and a lot of our women who are listening now, this isn't a new concept. This isn't like a brand new thing. Um, but for many women in the world, it is the fact that the fact that we could truly have all the answers inside of us and be guided from an internal source versus an external one, that that is sometimes so foreign that people can't even fathom that that would be. And so I hope as many women in the world as possible awaken to that because I think when we're all listening to our inner guidance as women, we are listening to the, the pulsing, breathing heartbeat of all of creation. And we're all working in accordance with, with her, with what's the highest and best for this world. And that's when things work. You know, that's when, <laughs> that's when societies work is when us as women are, are going off into our tents and to our red tents and on our full moons and, and listening and drumming and, and opening to the inner guidance inside of us. That's when things really work, you know, for, for all of humanity. So, um, so let's do a little, a little one if you'd like. Okay. Um, now again, I've got my little man here. So if he starts to fuss and grumble, it's going to be a wise woman, grumbly baby meditation, but we'll make it work. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to invite anyone who is listening or watching right now to close your eyes and I want you to take some deep breaths down into your belly. Imagine that you're breathing these breaths all the way down into your womb. Or if you no longer have your womb in your body, that's okay. It can be an energetic space that's right down in your lower belly, your lower gut. When we talk about our gut feelings, we feel it in our gut. I want you to imagine breathing some life force energy right there into that space. Let your neck get a little bit longer. Let your shoulders drop down a little bit more so that you can release some of the tension from your body as you breathe. And surrender into the possibility that there is the greatest wisdom, the greatest knowing that you could ever need inside of you. And that she, wise woman, will call her the wise woman archetype will never, ever, ever lead you in the wrong direction. See if you can integrate that into your body as you breathe and surrender into that possibility. So we're gonna do a little journey to meet her, to meet our wise woman. And I want you to picture that you are in a beautiful place in nature, perhaps an open field. And I'm gonna take you in a little, down a little pathway, and guide you to go deeper inside and meet her. And the air all around you is beautiful and warm and just perfectly comfortable. Your feet are bare. You look down at the earth and you see that there is a path before you that leads into a wooded area, a very welcoming wooded area of green trees and mossy rocks. And one foot in front of the other, you start to walk towards this nature haven that you have found. And as you walk down the path, you go into deeper into this forest and there's a clearing. You can see that in the middle of the clearing, there's a place that you can sit down, you can rest, you can lay down on the earth, whatever feels most comfortable. And perhaps there's a circle of trees all around you or a circle of stones, but you sit down here in this clearing in a circle. And I want you to imagine that there 
from the forest comes this beautiful, ancient, wise woman. And I'm not going to tell you what she looks like because she's going to look different for everyone. For some people, they see a much older version of themselves or an elderly woman, even someone that they know that perhaps resembles an ancient wise woman. Okay. And imagine that she's walking towards you and introduces herself as your inner wise woman. And she is here to answer any questions that you may have right now. I just want you to recognize, see what you recognize about her. See what you notice. What do you feel when this presence emerges? What are some of the words that describe what you feel? Is it respect, awe, honor, fear, anything at all that you feel? Just notice. So she sits down there with you in this beautiful circle inside of this ancient forest. And she says, what is it that I can help you with today? And right now in this moment, I want you to think about anything that has been troubling you or you've been spinning around on in your head or you have questions about or anything at all right now, bring forth a question and let it come to, from your, that, that deep place inside, a question that you know you need some guidance in. And go ahead and take a few moments here in, in this meditation to ask your inner wise woman this question and see what response, see what energy or see what words you feel coming from her. Any bit of wisdom or advice or guidance. And stay with your breath. Keep breathing into your womb, into your belly, into this source of wisdom. <coughs> a few more moments to ask your wise woman and then we're going to ask her now Ask your inner wise woman, is there anything else that you want me to know? Is there any messages that she is here and she is here to teach you and share with you right now in this moment, perhaps that you didn't even know to ask? Is there anything else she wants you to know? And don't worry if you don't see things in this visualization. It's not just about seeing, it's about feeling, it's about hearing. And I recommend that you take some time and actually write out what comes to you after we complete here. Just take another moment. Is there anything else that she wants you to know? And then we will close this conversation. You can, however you feel, gestures, a sign of gratitude or of respect or honor. If it's a, a bowing like a namaste bow or um, touching foreheads together. But your wise woman, after you acknowledge her and thank her, takes her finger, you can imagine she's going to take her 
finger and point right to the center of your forehead and place your finger there as a way of connecting to your intuition. And she gestures for you to breathe down into your womb as a way to remind you that she will always be with you, that you can return to your body anytime you want to remember her. Through this third eye intuitive point on your forehead, through your belly, and through all the ways that your body speaks to you. She wants you to know that she is always here, no matter what. And so you say thank you and say your goodbyes and you know that you'll be back to this place again. And you can either stay here on this green, beautiful, wooded area and just rest your body or you can take your walk back out of the forest. Take just a few more moments, a nice deep breath. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. So that was a very shortened and simple version of the Wise Woman Meditation. We have lots of extended versions and sometimes we meet at the ocean, sometimes in the forest, sometimes you get to decide whatever comes to you. But I'm curious, Mary, how was that for you? Oh, it was beautiful. And yeah, you got a very clear message. Yeah, do you want to share it? Yeah, um, I've been I've been kind of going back and forth between um, this big decision in my life and what my wise woman shared was just calm down. <laughs> she said, "Just just be still. Don't decide anything." Mm, ooh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a very good one. I get that one a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Thank you. I bet you that that's, um, that's advice we all could use. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, she's the voice that comes through in the stillness and, and of course, like there's so many different ways that people have shared this or explained this or looked at this and, and thinking of her as an archetype, for me, archetypes are very relatable. You know, you can you can even think of goddesses that represent the archetypes, of course. You know, like the, the archetype of the mother, we've got Gaia, we've got um, Ishel, we've got many different goddesses that represent the mother archetype, but it's it's like a it's a relatable energy that we can have a relationship with. And we have energies inside of us that we can create relationships with. And that is a part of what I share wholeness is. It's just having this active, engaged relationship with parts of ourselves so that we're not um, suppressing, you know? And not just the fluffy, wonderful ones, but the, the darkness, the shadows, the fear. Those deserve to have a voice as much as anything else. And, and the wise woman will usually be the one that kind of guides you when you've not been looking at that, right? Like she'll help you see, like she can be very dark. She can say, look, we've got to, we've got to give this part a voice. You know, we've got to give this fear a voice. Otherwise it will stay dormant, not even dormant. It will stay active <laughs> inside of you until it's given an opportunity to, to be free. Yeah. And so that's really a lot of what I like to do with women is help, help us all to feel like there's no part of us that's not meant to be. And from there, we can really um, do the work we're meant to do in the world. Mm -hmm. So powerful. And so for all of you that are watching, um, I hope you enjoyed that meditation as well. And Laura's all, also giving everyone that's viewing um, how to reclaim your true feminine wisdom, a full seven part video course. So that I'm really excited to check out after getting this little snippet meditation. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else you'd like to say about that? No, it's, well, yes, I guess so. If I'm going to say something, <laughs> yes, it's, um, it's great. It's a seven part course and is there's videos and it's um, journaling exercises and just kind of gives a, a very broad, but also in depth introduction to a lot of the things that I 
have done for myself and in my own healing and in the, the 15, 16 years of working with women, it's kind of like touches on a lot of the main um, teachings and it's a great course. So I hope you'll use it and enjoy it. And um, it's not just like one audio, it's a whole seven videos and all sorts of stuff. So it could be, <laughs> it'll keep you busy for a few days. Oh, um, awesome. so please enjoy it. It's my gift to you. Well, thank you so much for gifting that and the meditation and just your wisdom um, and bringing your little one here to yeah. special, sweet and gentle energy. So oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see you all soon. Have a good one. Thank you.